For what reason does the gentleman from Michigan rise? Are you going Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Clerk. There's been a lot of talk about history over the last few days. In 1856 was the last time it took longer than the votes we're having right now to find a Speaker of the House. 133 over two months. Without question, the issues divide us today are much less severe than they were in 1856. In fact, there's far more that unite us than divide us, regardless of our political party or our ideology. The issues today are over a few rules and personalities. While the issues at that time were about slavery and whether the value of a man who looks like me was 60% or 100% of a human being. It was a long, drawn out, painful process, but it needed to happen. And in the end, Nathaniel Banks won by the slimmest of margins. But you know, margins don't matter when your policies are on the right side of history. Yeah. On that day, long ago, the good guys won. On that day, long ago, the abolitionists won. On that day, the people who believe in freedom and self-determination won. Leading, the leading Republican nominee won then, and the leading Republican nominee will win again today. Since then, our nation has made a lot of progress. That includes families like mine. My family's gone from slave to the floor of United States House of Representatives being the first member of his freshman class to speak in a series of five generations. My family has gone from slave to right here since 1856. My father and mother born in the 1940s and 1950s in the Jim Crow South, and my dad lived directly across the street from a school he couldn't go to because he was black. He started a business. He started a business with one truck, one trailer, no excuses, with the help of his wife, and now his son stands here on the precipice of taking back the majority for the American people and taking this nation in the right direction. I've heard, I'm a freshman, I've only been here for a couple days, but I've heard a lot of D.C. politicians tell me about how broken D.C. is. I don't need D.C. politicians to tell me how broken D.C. is. The American people have already told us how broken D.C. is by giving Republicans the majority so we can fix this mess. We will counter the socialist movement of envy and confiscation with a conservative movement of access and opportunity. We will stand on the right side of history again. We will end the growth of government and we will stop 87,000 new IRS agents from picking through your pocketbooks. We will secure our energy independence. We will ban the sale of petroleum from our strategic reserves to China. We'll establish a bipartisan select committee specifically to keep our eye on the ball in China. We'll address the crisis at the border that's killing Americans by the day and improve both our safety and our nation and our dignity for those who come here in search of a better life. But not yet. We're still stuck at the starting block. The American people have told us by putting a Republican majority here that they want Republicans to lead and they want a government that works and doesn't embarrass them. And we are failing on both missions. That must change today. It will change. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin said, we must hang together or we must assuredly hang separate. We're stuck in a malaise, at an impasse, and we will stay here 
We will not be able to fight the real conservative fights until we find a way to come together and fight that mission together. Yesterday, we experienced very briefly our first win. It's a small victory. It's a small victory. It was a small victory, but didn't it feel good? We've been working hard for that victory, and there's much more to come. At a cadet at West Point, I learned the phrase, and it's always been my motto throughout life, mission first, people always. And right now, the people are left out. Right now, they don't have a Congress to speak for them at the highest level of government. Right now, every individual in this room can concede that the rounds that we've taken is, is not what we told our constituents we do. We told them that we would fight the opioid crisis for perspective. There's a hallowed monument that my father took me to. My father's a Vietnam veteran. This monument is a total length of 500 feet, nearly two football fields. It's 10 feet high, and the letters are only a half inch. 58,000 names. 58,000 names for a war that lasted years. According to the CDC, in 2021, we lost almost twice as many people as we lost in Vietnam to overdoses. We've lost 600 Americans to overdoses since Tuesday, y'all. We're talking about the debt rising. You can't count how many dollars we spent of our great-grandchildren's money since Tuesday. The work we promised the American people we would do, we're welching on that promise. But I have hope. I have hope that we'll be able to come together, unify, and put the right person in leadership from many one, e pluribus unum. I'm standing here today because I'm the seventh to stand up in support of Kevin McCarthy for speaker. He's earned my trust. The first time we met was in his office under the watchful gaze of a, a Frederick Douglass painting. And he told me in that office, on the eve of the 2019 State of the Union address, that there's nothing that could be said or done during that address that embarrassed him more than the fact that when the Democrat side stood up, they would look more like the United States of America than we did. And he set out not to compromise our values, not to compromise our ideology, but to work harder to make sure that more people with diverse perspectives and different lived experiences could be here. In the very next election, he won 14 seats up from 199. And all the seats he won were with minorities, women, and veterans. The very next cycle, this next cycle, he won and me and my good buddy and classmate in West Hunt help double the number of black Republicans in the, in the Republican yeah. Congress. Yeah. Look, y'all, we have a long way to go, but we've come so far. We've come so far, and we can't quit. We can't quit. You don't fire a guy who's winning. And when you look at the governor's mansions and the legislatures we've lost across the country just this past cycle, and when you look at the gains that Kevin McCarthy has made uphill, getting the gavel as a more minority leader in half the time, you know, the mainstream media likes to laud the leadership of Nancy Pelosi. Kevin McCarthy won the gavel back as minority leader in half the time uphill. We want to talk about people who can win? Well, I'm a Lions fan, and... and uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's right. Look, I'm well acquainted with snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Y'all, we need to learn how to win. We need to learn how to take a victory. And by Kevin McCarthy's leadership, he's given us victories on rules. He's given us victories on keeping costs down. He's given us victories with winning a majority back. I'm so proud to be a part of the majority making class, and he's earned my trust. And hopefully he'll earn your trust. And he's got 90% of us in the conference. When is, when is the last time any of us had 90% approval ratings? Kevin McCarthy, you're going to see up there, 
has over 90% approval ratings. If you really want to start making history, let's do it the right way. We need a conservative fighter to help this country get back on the right track. But the first thing we need to do is elect Leader McCarthy as Speaker of the House. I'm ready to make history, and I know you are. I'm excited to work with each and every single one of you because we have a job to do. So at the direction of the Republican Conference, I advance the name of Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House for the 118th Congress. Uh.